Saturn has got a lot of moons. You know why? Because God loved it so much and put a ring on its finger. <laughs> I'm kidding. Kidding. But nice thing. That, <laughs> you just got that now, did you? <laughs> I'm a little slow tonight. I'm That's sorry. okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> when it comes to the creation of the universe, we try to explain to people how the planets got here. You know, the accretion disk and everything, the spinning uh, of all the matter kind of comes together and coalesces. Saturn has all these massive rings and has a lot of moons. And now they've discovered the birth of a new moon out there for Saturn, not for us, because, you know, we only have the one. And that was tragic how that how that came about. Uh, and you wouldn't want to have been around when that happened. But if the moon that comes to fruition for Saturn, it's it's going to be its 63rd moon. Could you imagine having 63 children? Man, they just they would just really be bad for your your after. <laughs> It'd be having a kid ever since you were born. But <laughs> when Connie comes close. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She does. Uh, yes. <laughs> but the 63rd moon, they've co-named it. Well, co well, they've named it Peggy anyway, which is kind of weird. You know, it's like we got this one, this, the Titan, is, and then they got Peggy. <laughs> which is kind of cool that the fact is that they've been able to actually see this happen. What's interesting is that the all this is, is right now is just ice crystals that are starting to come together, forming and coalescing. If the moon moves to a, a larger orbit and once it gets heavy enough, I imagine, then it will have to fight for dominance with all the other moons. But if it stays with her where it's at, it could still break apart because it's got a lot of other mass around it that it's still trying to collect. And if there's something else in there that could break it apart, it could it could just shatter and start all over again. But this is really fascinating because we've actually seen the coalition or not coalition the coalescing of the planetoid or the moon were actually coming together and you can see it there's a great picture of it crystal your thoughts oh i know saturn has always been my very favorite planet i think because like i had to do like a report on it like in the third grade and i think ever since then i've just been kind of fascinated with saturn i really liked how this article described the quote birth of this moon or at mm -hmm. least supposedly i think this is not actually confirmed they still are saying it looks like um that it's gotten a new moon which would be its yep. 63rd one yep. but i do like how it uh, kind of it relates it to a birth and it talks about about it a lot in, in this article it fascinating just to see a disturbance in the ring mm -hmm. in the rings meant uh in the outer rings actually that, that meant that that was uh what had happened and you know of course it's composed of all the ice and why they named it peggy and not something cooler like crystal i don't get <laughs> i hey i voted for crystal but they said no no there's already crystals out there so they are saving that for some time like something as big as the rapture i'm i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> but this is really cool because they say like in 2016 you know that um it, it might be uh able to get like a really good shot of this mm -hmm. if it has not dissipated or yeah uh, yeah the, the, uh, the yeah the, the uh, cassini probe that's out there yes and, that you should hopefully get a, a bigger another picture of it before it flies off and goes and looks at other moons and you know i think if you if you go out looking for moons is that kind of uh, being like a pervert no that's a, <laughs> that was a exhibitionist well, i think so <laughs> exhibitionist you know just i'm just kidding dave <laughs> your thoughts <laughs> uh yeah this is really interesting peggy is about six miles wide 1200 or 1200 kilometers it's 740 miles long mm -hmm. it's on the outer ring originally they believe when they first had noticed that there was something going on they believed it had a twin a second moon that mm -hmm. was a twin of it that has since disappeared. Mm. So it's either kind of not been able to hold together or it may have been flung into outer space. Mm. They're really not certain exactly what happened to it, but it's a pretty interesting situation either way to be able to witness this sort of thing. Phil Plate of the blog Bad Astronomer and the uh, Slate magazine had mm -hmm. actually compared this in a, a nice little comparison since Saturn is the Roman name for the Greek god Cronus, mm -hmm. 
who we all know he's known for for eating all of his children to prevent them from overthrowing him. Oh, yeah. So he's in this case, Saturn has actually given birth to a moon. And if the twin moon actually flung out into outer space, then that's one of his children escaping Cronus uh, eating it. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) It's a baby eating thing, you know, you just got to eat it. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. So it's uh, it's really an interesting thing on a lot of different facets, uh, be it the the birth of something, the disappearance of something else. You know, a good example of accretion that's going on. It's pretty interesting story. Yes, it is. If you have access to a sa- uh, not a satellite, if you have access to a satellite, please give me a call. I we'll, we'll do lunch. But no, if you have access to a telescope, a powerful enough one, you can probably see this yourself, maybe even. So, but anyway, you guys probably probably find all these pictures out on NASA.gov. 